I would not be here today in front of you if it wasn't for climate change. I was born out of climate change. My father came here as a refugee from Ethiopia, and the reason he had to leave was largely because of climate change. My grandfather worked directly under Haile Selassie, the last emperor of the 3,000-year-old Ethiopian monarchy. He left Ethiopia. My father left Ethiopia the day before Selassie was killed in the 1975 military coup. He was murdered because his people were unhappy with his actions as king, and more specifically, how he failed to deal with the famine of 1973 through 75. Selassie's failure to address, address this environmental disaster led to an estimated 200,000 lives being lost, which was one of the main causes for the uprising. The famine of 73 through 75 was a result of desertification, which caused the extension of the Sahara Desert into the agricultural lands and rendered them obsolete. Desertification has been increased by climate change. The drought and famine was not contained to Ethiopia, but also extended into all of the Horn of Africa and has now been ongoing for the last 20 years. Natural disasters such as these are not isolated events because with natural disasters can also come civil unrest. These areas that have been affected by droughts for the last 20 years correlate with the areas that have had civil war during the same time, including the neighboring countries of Somalia, Darfur, and Eritrea. Climate change has no borders. The natural disasters, which were intensified by climate change and resulted in war, led to massive migration. My father was one of those refugees. My dad finally settled in Seattle, Washington, where he met my mom, and years later I arrived. I was born to fight climate change, to right the wrong that forced my father out of his country and away from his family and home, just that way it has and continues to do with countless others. Radical Islam was frequently blamed as a catalyst for the Arab Spring, but it was the rising food prices that brought people out in the street. The Middle East is the largest importer of wheat. And when a once-in-a-century drought in China reduced the wheat supply, it caused food prices to rise 40% in the Middle East, making food unaffordable to many, thus setting the stage for the Arab Spring. Likewise, a five-year drought in Syria that the Assad regime ignored caused 1.5 million farmers to, end, to leave their farms, move to the city, and cause ethnic and religious strife, and in the end led to another civil war. Another example is the 200,000 farmers that were displaced from Niger and Chad due to the severe drought and famine. Many of them joined Boko Haram. The Boko Haram then took advantage of the poor response from the Nigerian government to the climatic changes in Nigeria, leading to the poverty and instability that made it easy for the Boko Haram to kidnap over 200 girls and massacre more than 300 civilians. Climate change is the biggest terrorist that world has ever experienced. And, and this is one terrorist that America won't be able to bomb its way out of. Perhaps that's why the West has failed to address it. No amount of gunpowder or drones will solve this problem. But just because our governments have failed to address this global security threat does not mean that we can allow for this level of irresponsibility. The conflicts that climate change cause are not retained to poor countries. Climate change does not respect political or national boundaries. Weather is local, climate is global, and climate change is indiscriminate of race, nationality, or culture. Climate change does not care if you are rich or poor, black or white, Canadian or native. When disaster strikes and resources are limited, Everyone is just as likely to be drawn into conflict to resolve the disparity, however, however unequal that resolution may turn out to be. And even though climate change threatens us equally, the results are felt unequally. People of color, women, low income, and indigenous communities are on the front lines of the disastrous effects of climate change. Those who are least responsible are most affected. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Yeah. 
As a young black woman and a second generation immigrant, fighting climate change isn't a choice. It's an obligation and a duty to protect not only my rights, but my community and generations after me. I'm a 21 year old senior at the University of Washington who plans to continue on to get my PhD in oceanography to study the acidifying ocean caused by our excessive carbon pollution. This is especially important to me because I live next to the Salish Sea, which due to coastal upwelling has some of the most acidic pH levels in all of the oceans. Staring into a microscope at pteropods at Noah's laboratory, I had a life-changing experience. I saw with my own eyes the proof climate change is happening now. The acidification in the ocean was causing the shells of pteropods to dissolve, dissolve away their shell that they were composed of. No big deal, right? They're just some species I've never heard of. At least that's what some people claim. Pteropods are microscopic snails, so that most people have never seen them. So why should we be concerned about this little species being affected by climate change? Well, these microscopic snails are at the bottom of the food chain, and thus many creatures in the sea, including salmon, depend upon this food being present to survive. They are some of the most essential prey items in the ocean. When you pull out the bottom of a foundation, the whole house cr cr crumbs crumbling down. And when I recognized that the foundation of the ocean's food chain was being destroyed, I realized the state of emergency that we are already in. Further proof that climate change respects no borders and is not restrained to just poor countries. What do I have to look forward to once I graduate, given the current projection of our emissions? The end of coral reef? the extension of wild fish in the sea, an increase of two degrees of warming, the rest of the Arctic's ice melting away. These are all forecasted predictions that could happen in my lifetime. The world's politicians are gambling our future away, and I don't plan on letting it happen. I fight to end climate change because I have no future if it is not stopped. When I'm old, I want to be able to tell my grandchildren that I fought for both theirs and my future. I want to be able to, to tell them I was part of a movement that changed history and averted the extinction of mankind. That I did just not sit back and let the world burn, but I did everything in my power to stop it. And so even though when it feels like we are but a splash of water on a burning building, if we come together as a collective, we can drown out the flames. like and how do we put out the flames? Well, I'm proud to tell you that you have already begun by coming out here in the hundreds in solidarity with people across North America and in New York where the largest climate change rally in history is occurring. We are already a part of the solution. We need to make climate change a populist movement. We need to make it a voters issue. We need to raise enough concern over it that every politician and party make sure to have a climate change platform. We need to make it known to politicians that it is unacceptable to deny the existence of one of our biggest threats in human history. And if they decide that they want to deny climate change, then we will decide they are unfit for political office. Become involved with local politics. Call, write, and know your representatives. Let's not forget that it is our taxes that pay the politicians. And they're here to serve our interests. We put them in there and we can take them out. You see, we are at a turning point. The United Nations Summit in Paris in 2015 is our last chance to take climate action if we want to stay below two degrees. Let's shape history. Let's avert the extinction of mankind. Are we going to let them get away with ruining the planet? No! no. Are we going to let them get away with destroying the ocean? No! no. With ruining our future? No. no! So what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Keep it Thank in the you. ground!